And welcome back. You're still listening to Day One Radio on ABLRadio.com. We got the guest of the hour in here right now, the big homie, all the way from Watts, California, the one and only Glasses Malone. What up, bro? Man, I'm cooling, man. What's happening? I ain't nothing, man. What brings you to the A, man? Oh, man, shit, man. You know, when I need to see black people, I come to Atlanta. Yeah, nigga, you black from people. Watts. I know. <laughs> my mama, you don't even know this. My mother grew up in Watts, right? Yeah. My mother, and this was, you know, back in the 60s. My mother told me she did not see a white person in living color in real life until she was 14 years old. That's wow. probably true at that time. Um, yeah, the city still got a lot of black people, but, you know, when you come to Atlanta, it's like Los Angeles with black people. Right. right. As soon as you leave Watts, you know, even going to Compton, you know. Yeah. Shout out to all of my Mexican brothers, but you know, it's di- we're a little darker, so you know you can like tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying so it's crazy. Like you come to Atlanta, you just see black people. It's almost alarming. You feel me? Like when you from LA, you don't see as many all the time. Right. Like you still see such a mix. It's, it's like it's real diverse at home. But uh, when you come out here, you just see this influx of black people, and they all look like rappers. <laughs> you know what? It's funny you say that because, like, my pops moved here from Pittsburgh in '84. But he visited down here for the first time in like '80, and he was like, you know, at my uncle's house and all day. He's like, oh man, it's like really. I thought y'all was still getting, you know, hoses and German shepherds sucked on y'all. But y'all, shit, y'all got BMWs and houses down here. Y'all doing it? <laughs> also, I realized being on Tower Tech Nine, Atlanta is a false. Uh, Impression of what Georgia is all about. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Once you leave 285, man, hey. Yeah, Georgia is shit. I'm telling you, this motherfucker right you here, know boy, these, you know these motherfucking people be acting a fucking fool. These white people out here, man. Y'all, y'all got to get y'all white people under control. <laughs> we understand Real what y'all tough. doing with y'all life. You know who where else is like that? New York. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing is, you know. Everywhere else, we got our white people under control. Like, Atlanta, like, Georgia don't got their white people under control. They white people just out of control. Like, you'll go to certain towns around this motherfucker, and they'll have them fucking flags and shit, the fucking uh, Confederate flags oh, yeah. and shit. So it's like, they'll be on that shit on the porch looking at you like, nigga, what you think you're doing here? And I'll be looking like, oh, they ain't got y'all niggas in check yet. <laughs> y'all gotta, <laughs> Georgia, y'all got to get y'all white people in check. They just out of control. <laughs> oh, this is the kind of show we go have today. Off top. <laughs> oh, you, you've never met this nigga before? No. Oh, yeah. There He's is gonna no keep it 100, man. 1,000. That's all I'm good at, man. I ain't really good at being no other body. Being being nobody else. I can't do it. So, I mean, I mean you've traveled, man. So, I mean, so, what are white people like in other states? You know what I mean? I don't get to interact with that many white people in other states. I'm usually like, <laughs> if, I, if I go to another state, I'm usually in the city that they say, you know, Chris Rock say, you know, there's only 10 cities with black folk. It's, Baltimore, D.C., Chicago, Detroit, Detroit you yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm. Miami got a couple of us when you cross that bridge, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Houston, L.A., Charlotte got some black folks, so it's like, I ain't really kicking it in. Yeah, it's not black. Know, yeah. This is not black, you <laughs> feel me? White folks in California, just we got our white folks under control. They understand. It's, it's, a, it's an understanding, you feel me? And um, they can be racist, but they not racist out loud. Yeah. They only could be racist in their thought. Racism in California is for lawmakers and police. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and they got to be careful. You know, in real life, like yeah. they, you, you yeah. got you can't be you got to be within the law of racism. But like out here, you'll get a nigger. Yeah, out here they no, fuck around you. in Georgia. Your ass probably can't walk through the front door. This motherfucker is crazy. Y'all got some shit like they like go get your shit out back, boy. You feel me? So. And I, I, you know, I can't get down with that treatment. I go to prison out here or to the morgue. So some people say they prefer it that way because at least they know that this person is racist to my. I know you racist to my face, and you not, you not, uh, you know, it's not hidden. I, I, where it's I, like I got to discover that you a racist. You I, know what like, I can't get down with that because that's like a nigga calling me a bitch just because he called me a bitch to my face. I can't. I'm not okay with that. <laughs> I know. You could think I'm a I'm bitch, like nigga, but you better not tell me, nigga. <laughs> right. So if these white folks, you know, they call me a nigga, you feel me? We got an issue, you know, especially <laughs> with everything going on, man. Like, right. it ain't enough looting. It ain't enough rioting. It ain't enough protesting, man. It ain't, you know. David Banner might end up being the next Martin Luther King, so that's coming along. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we need a Martin Luther King, and we need some more action. It's just crazy shit. And I mean, I just was reading some shit. I read, you know. I read a lot. And um, I was reading some shit. Like, in 2013, it was a city here. They just had their first... Interracial like, prom. Interracial prom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Like, how the fuck is Atlanta this close to that type of shit? Bruh, mm-hmm. they, they are still like sharecropping a- in Mississippi in 2014. That shit crazy. Like, people are just fooled. Like you said, you go only go to certain cities. I've driven across country four times. Most of this shit is still in Fucked the 60s up. and 70s. Yeah. Most oh, yeah. people are not in the current times, man. Yeah, you find mm-hmm. out on election day, you're like, God damn, look at all these red ass states, <laughs> man. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and even that out. is some bullshit. Like, red, blue, whatever. It's the same oh, shit. It's the same shit. You know what I'm saying, though? There's white people with Crips and blood. <laughs> Essentially, and so, in suits, instead of dickies. I, I just like I said, I just think the uh, brothers around the rest of the country don't got their white people under control. Y'all got to get y'all white people under control. They already gonna rip you off at work. Don't let them rip you off in the street, man. I don't care. Like what, 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 what town? Do you remember what town or city that you uh, wound up seeing some of this kind of behavior? Shit, I was out in the town of Georgia. I forgot that. I ain't gonna even lie. I was on tour with Tech Nine, and you know Tech Nine bring out all the white people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you get the white people that never even met black people outside of Tech Nine before. Hmm. Like, I, a fan of Tech Nine told me that I was the third black person he ever met wow. outside of Tech Nine's camp. Wow. And that was scary because that nigga looked every bit of 22, 23. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, but like I said, I blame, I blame the rest of the black people in Georgia. It's y'all fault. It's us. <laughs> y'all got to get y'all white people under control. You go up to the Bay, man, you know, man, you go up to the Bay, man, it's white and black people live together poor yeah. in harmony. Poor in harmony. So, how y'all allow y'all white people to still be racist in Ohio and Georgia? I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Y'all got to get y'all shit together. Y'all and, ain't busting and, up windows or busting up ads. Y'all need a Reginald Denny or something. I don't know what y'all gonna <laughs> do with y'all. Like. But you know, but I, I think what's going on though is I think it's kind of a thing where it's like they live in that segregated um, mind state, but in the way of like you know. We over here, y'all over there. Don't fuck with us. We yeah, ain't we fucking not with, with y'all. See, from LA, we immediately go to that person's neighborhood and immediately start trouble. Hmm. Mm. It's no, you can't live like this. That's not acceptable. I agree. I think because it's- we don't got. You got to think it's fair. We don't got like you know anti white people shit on the front yard. You know, right. and they know mm-hmm. you know none of that shit in our yard. So they know y'all. You know the. The brothers in Georgia is living over here on some just cool shit. They ain't mad at white people because it's white people in Atlanta. But these white people over here living like fuck y'all still. Like it's like it's like some niggas like fuck y'all, and it's like y'all over here like well it's cool. No, no, it's fuck y'all. We just don't fuck with y'all. But you know what's, what's funny is to an extent you definitely got a point. I and I, I dealt with that here and in New York to where when you check somebody that's out of pocket. They're shocked, yeah, because mm-hmm. it's like they ain't never had no black person like, and I'm you know I'm from Oakland, I don't play All that t- shit. Like, I, like, especially them niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I thought L.A. niggas was bad. Don't let that crippin' blood fuck shit fool you, man. I'm from Watts, L.A., born and raised, crib my whole life, 117th Street. That Oakland and shit up there, Hunters Point and Richmond, that shit different. Mm-hmm. Them niggas be tripping for nothing. <laughs> oh, niggas yeah. be like, oh man, L.A. niggas be tripping off color. No. Oakland niggas trip because it's you know it's, Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> it's two o'clock. We we on my nigga. Yeah. What's up with y'all? What's up, bro? What up, blood cast? Yeah. They hit you with both at the same time, <laughs> and they know the laws on guns and shit. Oh, they kill up? you and argue with the police. My nigga Zoda Rose to so shout out my nigga Zoda. Oh, man. He fought his own case in court, like murders and niggas fought his case and got out. Uh, wow, dude, not just a regular case, a third strike case. Fought, yeah, it, damn, fought his out. own case, beat it, and got off. And, and came beat home. <laughs> God damn, man. We need him That's in the district attorney yeah, office. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Dog. So always the type of OG. nigga when that nigga walks in the club, other niggas walk in the other direction. And, that, and, that, and, that, and I ain't going to lie, them the type of niggas is my friends. Yeah. yeah. I go to Miami, I'm going to fuck with E Class. I go to Houston, I'm going to fuck with Jay. Shout out to Jay Prince. I go to Detroit, I'm going to fuck with Trick. I go to New York, obviously, I'm in Flatbush, I'm a fuck with Wink and my boys. Like, I, I fuck with the problems that people view as the problems. They really, I understand them. We kind of understand each other on the same accord. Like, do you think, you know what I'm saying, I mean, with the climate that we're in right now, with all these, you know, non-indictments happening for these police officers and everything, do you think it's going to take more cats like that? You know, not the lawyers, not the, you know, the peaceful protests. Do you think it's going to take more cats like that, like, you know, rally around and get shit quote unquote done or changed well I think you really need both um yeah see that's the thing like um a couple fans got mad they felt I was uh encouraging people to loot and riot oh they tearing up our community first off this shit ain't ours I don't give a fuck which building you think we renting 
which one of these motherfucking buildings you think we own. If you don't pay your taxes, they take it. So really ain't none of this shit ours. But if you turn a, um, a group of people into animals, you know, you, you take away their education, you take away their ability to enable themselves, you know, economically, you take away their health, you know, by putting the worst type of food around them. You take away their ability to not, you know, define their culture, you know, whatever their talent is. Well, you got a whole bunch of people that can't really express themselves in the way that's fitting to other people who, who are benefit, you know, who've been benefited mm-hmm. by those things. So, but that don't mean they voices and their frustration don't need to be heard. So if you don't got the education and the nourishment, and it's, it's as simple as a fight, a fight breaks out because two people, you know, it's, it's when communication breaks down, when people don't know how to express themselves verbally, you know, and then fights happen because then that's the next level of expression. Well, this is the same thing. Like, it ain't enough looting. It ain't enough riding. It's a lot of peaceful protests. I mean, everybody's, I'm not mad to keep that shit going, but, you know, we do need a, a younger Martin Luther King, somebody that people respect. And I think, like, like I was saying, I like what Banner is at with that shit. And, um, it ain't enough, like, looting and riding. It ain't enough. It needs to be fear, man. Like, yeah. it, it's not really ever going to change because it's not really a reason to change. Like, the real problem is always going to be ignored. I mean, we going to blame. It ain't just white people. It's not even about white or black. It's really, you know, more socialistic issues than anything else. People viewing how they should fix society, how somebody should control education, somebody should control economics, you know. Same thing. So, that's the real problem. But until then, yeah, somebody going to treat me right. You know, mm-hmm. you can't fuck me over, too. I already got to deal with this big problem, this big elephant in the room. But now you can't do this, too. You know, you can't, you know, as a policeman, and, like, I'm not one of them rappers who, like, fuck the police. I yeah. don't really got no problem with no police, man. I'm on the other team. It's a sport to me. Feel me? Don't get me wrong. It's a real-life game, and you could die. You go to prison, but it's a sport to me. I'm not mad. You got to protect the people you pay to protect. My job is to make money the best way I know how and make sure I survive these streets the best way I have. So it puts us on opposite ends of, of, of the field. Mm. But I don't hate them for that. Now, the ones that's out there killing brothers, the, the white guys out there killing brothers, I mean, you know, it's obvious it's, it, it has to be some racially motivated things. So for them to, to be able to walk off, you know, manslaughter, no murders, no nothing, Man, Ohio got to stand up and act the fool. Missouri got to stand up and act the fool. Florida got to stand up and act the fool. Like, I, I got a song with Kendrick called Thuggin', man. It's like one of the best songs I did. It's for my new project. And I really get that Luke and Trick, you know, Trick trick Daddy real tough because it's like, and, and them is some of my favorite icons in this business. I love them to death, but I got to really get at them on some real shit because it's like, when Lil Wayne say, fuck Miami Heat, you niggas ban him out of club. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> this this motherfucking weirdo killed this man because he was losing the fight. Killed this little boy because he losing the fight. And y'all don't throw a rock through a McDonald's window. Yeah, for real talk. That's some whole ass shit. Now mm-hmm. you was a you was a youngster when the rebellion popped off in '92. Yeah, I knew it. I got some. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at, at twelve, you feel me? That's all you know how to do is get some for free. Eleven, twelve, we just got some for free. Yeah, but no, we did our part. What do you? Uh, <laughs> see as the, the similarities and the differences between this situation going on now and that situation then. Society is pussy. Mm. The, the best rappers at the top of the game is soft, so they soft. So, so like The leaders are soft. The people who the urban culture follow is soft, so society is soft. Mm. Straight up and down. It's soft. It's soft. At that time, who was doing their stuff? 92, you had Death Row, you had Cube, you had some real you had some real villains at that time that was running things and they and they gave you different expressions and they gave society courage. Now you got you got the, the, the elite rappers at the top of the game and no disrespect to none of them, but they not really I wouldn't want my if I had a son, I wouldn't want them listening to them. Like it, it's a spineless effort. They don't have the same ability. They not out there. And if they is talking, you know, they not about putting put no foot in no ass. Right. So this is a time and place where you need foot and ass. You need you, you need kill like Mike. You feel me? Mike. Mike needs to be at the top because Mike got that shit in him. Yeah. And Mike will say that shit that make a motherfucker feel a certain way, and you'll be wanting to get on your shit because Mike be on the shit. <laughs> but I mean, if you listening to you know Drizzy, my God, I've been you know remember when he first came to the label? You're not gonna bust a grape if you listen to Drizzy. I mean, Drizzy is gonna make you 
try to forget your problems and go get a girl. Like, no, nigga, the problem outside right now, you can't not go outside. Right. With all of this stuff happening as of late, like we've been speaking on, um, I was talking to somebody a little earlier today, and they was they were saying, they were alluding to the fact that they was like, well, you know this is why they killed Pac, right? Because they know that Pac would have been at the front, so this is why they had Pac killed. What do you believe? Like, do you do you believe that there's any validity in that? Because, wh- I mean, if they were to say that, like, maybe a few months ago, I'd have been like, uh, you know what I mean? True. But now, like, living in this, and it's like week after week, we always hammer something. The little kid that got killed the other day talking about they thought he was 20 and he was 12. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, little it, kid. Yeah, like, clearly right. little Right. Kid. So now it, now it makes sense what she's saying. Like, shit, maybe they did have pot killed. Like, to go back and look at his interviews from then, it's like... Pac was some shit. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't be trying to hear that shit at all. Honestly, I, I I believe the person, you know, that everybody at home know killed him. I believe that person killed him. Mm. And I believe it was over some simple things. Could it have been some extra motivation into it financially? Maybe. I mean, I think the way they take away black leaders is different for every time. Mm-hmm. We take ourselves away. They... The people we talking about in question, not like I said, the same the same idea of the Illuminati that everybody was screaming. A person like Jay Z would be a part of, as if they would fuck with a nigga. Mm-hmm. Man, they don't fuck with niggas. Nobody around the world fuck with niggas. Mm-hmm. Not even niggas fuck with niggas. So it's like that's some stupid shit. But the the type of people we talking about, man, is um they have to believe they doing something right. They have to believe this is the way society needs to be for it to to preserve itself. So. A lot of the things that happen is for their best interest. So if a Tupac comes up dead, they can do other things to make him be disconnected from, you know, his culture. They, they don't assassinate people no more. They assassinate your character. character. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and they'll assassinate a white person. Mm-hmm. You know, this same type of people. Like John Kennedy and Abraham Lincoln, that shit is not no accident. This shit is the same type of shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Martin Luther King, man, it's... it's, it's you know, it, all this shit is Malcolm X. It's the same thing. You know, you can... These type of people are brilliant. These type of people have been doing this type of manipulation for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, and they they manipulate whole countries. Like, so if you feel, you know, United States of America goes to war with a country over oil, well, mm-hmm. United States of America don't own the oil company, so who's going to reap the benefits? Right. Somebody America owe in this country. So, to answer your question, I mean, it's possible. But, I mean, I think that... Pac put himself in a position to where he started being a part of something that was going to get him killed mm. as well. Like Once you start fucking with that Crip and Blood shit or you start choosing a side and, you know, it, it, it is a power to it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, with power comes, you know, risk. And, I mean, he, he just got caught up in a bad situation where he was in the middle of a real gang war. Mm. So it could have been something extra, you know, to make the opposite side chip him off, but... I know it's the reason why he, the person that chipped him off never went to jail, for sure. And yeah. everybody in the city know that who did it. So, it ain't no secret. And I definitely know they don't want that nigga alive. That's for sure. They don't want, they didn't want that nigga alive. Wow. Now, if they wanted him, if they was going to set up him getting killed, I don't know if he was that much on their on they list. Right. But another nigga that like, niggas need to be scared for is Kanye. Niggas need to be yeah. scared for Kanye. Everybody kind of turned their back on him, but people should be scared for him because he's a blessing. Hmm. People should be scared for that brother. That nigga might fuck around, come up, you know. They trying to devalue his words, but as soon as he come out with another project, he's so great, yeah. he'll take it back. So eventually, they'll, do, they'll get to a point to where, you know what I'm saying, like, you keep talking, nigga, like, yeah, it's going to come up. Listen, mm. don't incite the niggas now. <laughs> don't get the niggas started. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So it's like before we go into uh, we're gonna go into another break with the homie DJ Water Sparks. You picked up, you know, you, you brought up, you know what I'm saying, you know, like the whole gang war and everything, and like and everybody know that you're blue. So it's like I wanna get your thoughts on like how, what people think about, you know, saying things like, you know, Crips and Bloods need to get back on the truce and that need to be the black militia and all that kind of stuff, man. Before we do that, we're gonna go into this break with DJ Water Sparks. This is day one radio, ablradio.com. And we're back right here, Day One Radio, ablradio.com. Sitting in the building with Mr. Glasses Malone. What's going on? Man, I'm cooling, man. What's happening? Chinna, chinna, man. Now, you know, before we all uh, went into the break, um, you know, we was talking about, you know, you know, everything that's going on right now. And one thing I always get here brought up, heard brought up is 
folks say, man, where are the gangs at? Where are these aggressive ass dudes in these gangs when it's time to, you know, buck on police, buck on authority? Where are they at? And some people have even brought up that, hey, man, somebody, we don't know who, but somebody needs to go in there and get on some Hoover shit and turn these gangs into, you know, the militia that protects the community. You know what I'm saying? Like, what would you say to folks that, you know, bring that kind of thing up, man? Shit, don't look for them to help you when you was complaining about them. You know what I mean? Don't, don't look for a nigga to help you now. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You was talking shit. But, I mean, the whole idea behind Crips and Bloods and gangs in general, that's just nature, man. People love to tribe up. They always find their own tribe. Like, in Oakland, it ain't Crips and Bloods, but it's blocks. Yeah. It'll be this block or this project. And then within that project, is different lots and different, you know, different parking structures that these niggas is with. And these niggas is with these niggas. And... These niggas is with these niggas, man. I mean, that's just in us, especially with this melanin, you feel me? Mm-hmm. That's just in us. Um, the original idea was kind of contrived from, you know, that, that whole idea of protecting the community, but, you know, it got lost within the same thing. Like, we, the, the same type of brilliant people we talking about knew how to put drugs in liquor stores and, you know, reduce education and take away the jobs that was there and, and create you know, a desperate situation to where you can't even face the real problem. Um, Back to the same thing where I was telling you a fan was mad because I was inciting people to ride and loot and they was asking me, well, why don't we do a financial lockout? I'm like, my nigga, how you gonna try to explain how to do an economic like situation to that degree to people who don't even understand the basics of economics? You can't give intelligent solutions to ignorant people. And not ignorant in the sense, you know, the way we use it mm-hmm. as a, a, a offensive thing, but more or less people that don't even understand. They don't know. They don't have the information. So you got to educate people, though, because <clears throat> inherently we're a brilliant people. Hands down. But but the same brilliant people, they know that, too. So immediately the first thing you do is take away education. I, I think mm-hmm. we give the beast or the power structure at times too much credit we don't give it enough see i disagree because i think the people i think we across the board give too much credit because very few people know who really run shit we just say white people yeah obviously it's not and and that ain't the case no no no. at all and it's nine times out of ten not even the people that we see no hands down it's the people that we don't know what they look like but we may have heard a name here and there Sure, sure sure you know so that's what I'm, I'm talking about. Well, the thing is, like I said, we don't give them enough credit. It, it's I lost like 70 pounds, right? And um, everybody asked me, how you do that? And it was like, really, I just started reading. But I was blessed with the ability to read. I didn't come up under the same financial hardships as the average nigga that grew up in Compton and Watts. Um, I had great education, even in Compton. You know, Walton, I had AP classes. Paramount, I had AP classes. You know, like I was blessed. I wasn't poor growing up. Um, you know, my mom always kept me and stuff to, to help my culture. She tried her best to, to make the best foods. You know, I had a home-cooked meal with tons of vegetables and fruits. My situation is unique compared to the people where I live. So it empowers me different at this point in my life. So, yeah, I can get it. I right. get it now, even at my age now. I get it now. But we don't give them enough credit. Like, I mean, the general concept between them is the same like of Satan. You feel me? Not the Satan that everybody paint. The, you know, it's red beast with horns. Right. Like they paint the white Jesus and all that shit. They, you know, it's <laughs> it's a real understanding of this person and, and what drives them. Right. And that's the same thing we, we talking about to that extent that's driving these people. Right. You know, we don't give them enough credit. If we gave them credit, we'd be quick to burn down every liquor store in our hood. We wouldn't claim that as our own. We would burn down every church's oh, chicken. We wouldn't doubt. claim that as our own. And I, I think that also has to do with, with, it has to do with fear as much as it does ignorance. Of course. Well, sure, sure. I mean, you, you fear what you don't understand. I, I guess I can go with that I one. think there are people that understand it. They're just scared because they don't think there's anything they can do. Well, I don't want to believe that. I don't know. I don't know if that's fear. It's hard to believe. I don't believe, know if that's fear, but it's true. I don't know. I think that's more so a, a sense know, of like helplessness. I don't know if it's that fear. It, I mean, what's the difference? Well, helplessness. Because I, I don't believe that fear. people are helpless. Like the people in position that would know, like that's in my position or higher, they know, or they don't. They don't know. I think a lot of them don't know, and I think the ones that do know, you're right. They 
it could be like they know if they do this, they might lose this contract. That's fear. Yeah, but I, like I said, I don't, I don't know if it's a fear of helplessness. Like, I, I don't know if it's helplessness. I, I think it's just like a selfishness. Hmm. We, like, got brought up under different pretense. Like, only our people got brought up to believe we not supposed to help each other. Oh, man, you got to do what you got to do for yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do me. Mm-hmm. Every right, I'm going to do me. <clears throat> you know, it's all about me. You know. Surprisingly, I'm in Atlanta. You know, don't disrespect the rock of <laughs> us. But, like, I'm going to do me. That's, like, horrible to preach. Right. Nah, we got to do us. At least do your family, my nigga. You feel me? <laughs> and I get it's not always in that context, but if you bright as an MC, like Cuz bright as an MC, right? But his listener don't have the same benefits. His listener ain't a CEO of a label, a hustler. Maybe grew up in a decent condition, can feed himself salads. You know what I'm saying? He don't got that, right. so he takes I'ma do me, like I'ma do me, mm-hmm. right? Literally, exactly. literally speaking. You uh, go ahead. Man. I was just going just I guess tie it all together what we're saying it, it goes beyond what's on this i mean clearly it goes beyond what's on the surface you know what i'm saying yeah. and the reason that a lot of what i've been taught a reason that a lot of us think the way we think is because this is something that and not to pull that card but we've been conditioned and continue no, to be conditioned to, to think a certain way you definitely need to pull that card that card ain't being pulled enough i mean it's not you know we didn't create this like let's just be on some mind my mind, 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 mind shit like this is something that was implemented centuries ago and then we still suffering from it like that's uh, yeah. the reason why the wealth like um what, what was we i gonna say you know what i mean yeah. yeah like um in white families how they have enough money to where their kid graduates from school the house is already paid off so the parent is like this house gonna be start. yours sure. you know it's what i'm saying start. it's a hellified head I mean, start. It, we don't it, have that it boils down to and uh, once again like you said it's not solely about race it's about power because there are far, race too, though. There, yeah but there are far <laughs> more poor white people in this country than there are poor black people without a doubt well, and uh, percentage wise and numbers wise but what you're saying with it boy what they per capita or are we saying per capita or are we talking about just in general because it's literally i don't know Way more white people in this country. Of course, no. I'm saying percentage wise. My mother works for the state in California, mm-hmm. and she's been telling me since I was a kid. Don't believe these welfare numbers that they talk to you about on no, TV. There's more white people on welfare than anybody. without a doubt. But what I was gonna say, essentially, what Nadine is saying, like every time we talk about that and saying, well, we are, it's a detriment, and we're in this position because of certain things that happened in history, and people tell us, you know, oh, forget slavery. Blah blah this and that was so long ago. But if the descendants of slave owners are still benefiting financially hundreds of years later, right. who is to they? say that the descendants of slaves are, are not dealt detriment physically and mentally from those times? It's obvious. Yeah, it's it's extremely obvious. But to to switch gears a little bit, you you brought up your mom. And I know you and your mom is very close. And how she raised you and everything. I know she passed a couple years ago. Yeah. Um Talk a little bit about that relationship and, you know, the things that she taught you and all of that. Well, what's crazy is my brother and my mom, um, my brother and my mom was more closer than me and my me and my mom. Me and my mom had a great relationships, but her and my kid brother, they were way closer. Mm-hmm. Um, she said a lot of things to me that meant something, but what she did meant more than everything. I mean, you talking about a lady at a time where, you know, 12 hours a day, she was a registered nurse. She was able to get her education after she had a kid, registered nurse, graduated, you know, college, became registered nurse, 12 hours, come home, cook, you know, Mm -hmm. bought houses, hustled, you know. First time she went to the feds, I was like 10, 11. She was turning money orders um, from like $10 money orders and $1,000 money orders, like her and her crew and... Mm -hmm. You know, she died in prison, like I said, right. a couple years back, you know, 10 for some drugs. And um, the lessons are different. She made me realize that I don't want to have to hustle. Hmm. Um, hustling is wrong. And that's a hard thing to say when you've been raised as a hustler. But there's no such thing as a rich hustler. Hmm. Hmm. Like, if you hustle, that means you're getting paid for the time spent. Well, wealthy people... They make much more money than they than they spend time. Residual income, just incredibly growing residual income without 
it's even worse than residual income. You know, wealth is, is you actually have more money than you have time. Hmm. Like your money lasts longer than your time. Right. And you can't hustle and make that happen. Or unless you like literally don't spend money. Like you're going to live in a box and you're going to hustle and just put all that money up. But then you still got to use that money to invest. So like hustling is a backwards way to go if you want to acquire wealth. And if we ain't on this earth trying to acquire wealth of knowledge, economics, I don't know, experience, I don't know what we're doing. Hmm. And I think that's that's most of our problem. Like, we here without a purpose. You know, for a long time, man, I just did what I wanted to do. Like, my life wasn't supposed to be the way it was. I, I thought I was going to have kids, family, you know, 22, be a pharmacist. You know, I was 13, 14 years old thinking this and, and go to work 9 to 5 every day. Because I just wanted stability versus when my mom, you know, we was right. back and forth in the feds. And, and, you know, she did a good job, though. Like, we was never homeless, you know. We stayed in a, a motel maybe a year max, you know what I mean, doing shit. But she always made sure we were super good no matter what. And Pops did a good job, too, you know, when I would go to his house and watch. So, but it made me realize that I don't want to be on this earth and hustle. I can't get down. Like, I need to be wealthy. I, if it means reading and just wealth of knowledge like I need to have more knowledge than I have time like I need to know so much that I can't even tell enough people right um, what, what was the the turning point like what that whatever age made you gravitate towards the street and hustling and, and, and doing what you felt like you needed to do at the time I didn't even feel like I needed to do it. I just made a, a decision based off economics and I was 15 I don't, I don't, I don't have a good reason to, to sell drugs. I didn't have one. I didn't have a good reason to sell drugs or join the gang. I didn't have the reason everyone else did for sure. So I, I couldn't really be honest and give you a, a great story. Like no, it wasn't like that. It was like it started off as something simple. You sit down here, do your homework, you get sixty dollars in in an hour, forty five minutes, and it was better than seven dollars a day, five dollars right. a day, or whatever it was at the time. So it just made sense, and then it started being. You stay here for two hours, you make a hundred. Or if you cut it up, it'd be a hundred and fifty. Right. I'm a math nigga. Feel me? Like I had stats and shit. I took stats, so it's like I just understand numbers. And at that point, it was like, damn, I could get like seven hundred a week, extra two hours out of my day. I could do my homework here too. Yeah, this this makes sense to me. I mean, obviously, fifteen. I didn't have the understanding of saying. Right. The, the uh, repercussions outside of prison, you know, because that's all you. Prison don't scare me. That's not no reason to stop me from doing nothing. Like my mom went to prison. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, I was saying nothing. Like if a woman, if these niggas go to prison, I'm way colder than these niggas. And my mom went to prison, so psh, prison ain't shit. But the morale issue that that bothers me. The more I understand about how I'm responsible for 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 more of my people than before, it's like that bothers me. When I have to think back sometimes, I really so cracked to some of my homies, mamas, and dads. That shit fucked up. You know, and I could have did better than that. And at that time, economics, you know, trumped morality for me. And I, and I think I was just at a bad place. That's mm-hmm. that's that was, that was the problem at 15. Some real shit, bruh. Um, we were talking about earlier how a lot of MCs that are on the top of the game um, aren't really doing what they need to do as far as you know addressing the shit that's going on in the world right now doing what we feel they might should do one of the MCs that is is actually a dude I can't say you put me up on him but I can say you made me listen you probably don't even remember this uh, me you and Stretch was on the phone one day and you was like and I, I probably mentioned Dot K Dot and you was like that little nigga's a genius. And this is before the Kendrick Lamar EP. This yeah. is before any of that. And I had heard of him. I think I might have even had some music because I was fucking with J-Rock yeah, every yeah, day. Yeah. And, but I listened because you said that. And I was like, this nigga is incredible. Yeah. That is special. And I mean, just to even go into what you were saying, it's like, I don't think it's... Like, Drake responsibility ain't my responsibility. Cuz is from Toronto. Right. Cuz don't have to give two fucks about a nigga with this skin down in this motherfucker. He ain't even got the experience the same things. Motherfucker got the experience, so he not responsible for doing that. The niggas who responsible, I'm not going to take nothing from them. The ones who give a fuck, they saying something. J. Cole saying something. Dot saying something. That's what's important. I don't think it's their responsibility. I just think it's the way they go about addressing issues. 
and it makes society, it sets a standard. It's like a blind leadership, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, that you don't even know. Like, we were saying we was coming around where the little train shit is at, you know, yeah. and um, you see the you see the urban culture, niggas look like them. Yeah. You look like what's current. So that means you act like what's current. So tell me this, and I, I had this conversation earlier with my girl, and I was just like, I see more ignorance and followers from 21 to 28 than I do with teenagers. <laughs> when I talk to teenagers, and they could just be yeah, acting a certain no, way. No, they not no followers. No, nah, the, these kids yeah. are like bright as heck. You know, me and you both talk at like career days all the time, and it's like yeah. I'm always like encouraged when I leave. It's like, no, nah, these kids are not yeah. dumb. Like, I, cause I used to be that cantankerous young dude. Like, man, this kid done fucked up my hand, burger. Man, these kids dumb as hell. <laughs> you start talking to them, it's like, no, nah, man, these kids are bright as hell, bro. But they grew up with, with some shit. Mm-hmm. They grew up with a glitch in the matrix. You know yep. what I'm saying? They grew up with a glitch in the matrix. This shit right here. Yeah. They grew up with that fucking Glasses internet. Glasses holding up his uh, iPhone. Yeah. They grew up with that internet. They grew up with that YouTube. They grew up with ways to get information and education yeah. that them niggas 21 and 30 didn't have. I'm, mm. I'm right over 30, you feel me? So they grew up with some shit that the average motherfucker didn't have. So they following. They still looking at love and hip hop. Little yeah. nigga, a little nigga under eighteen. That little nigga got his own mind. Yep. He, they going I was telling somebody this shit the other day. Them little niggas might be some shit. Oh, they will be. Because it's not even a mic. Prime example. We was talking about the shit that's going on with mustard and, and Mike Free. You know what I mean? Like, I, I kind of thought it was common knowledge that mustard, you know, had other people around, you know, with the music and shit. Right. But I guess it wasn't. But a lot of them little dudes don't want to be mustard. Yeah. They don't look at much like, oh, I want to be money. Niggas like, man, fuck, I'm doing my own shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These little niggas, that's, ain't no little 15, 16. Them little niggas want to do their own thing because they they are privy to something that should not be available. Just like our generation. We was privy to, before they took information and education, we still got the last little bits of it. Mm-hmm. They took it for a while, and then, you know, Steve Jobs and them, they did this shit. They, they made information and education so available to whoever wanted it for such a low price now you you see in a generation of children that grew up with this shit they grew up with YouTube YouTube ain't old YouTube is really new you know it's mm-hmm. 2005 yeah. so if you new. if you 15 you had YouTube your whole life you know yeah, since man. you was since you yeah. were able to, to understand mm-hmm. so that means you could go learn anything that's why they can make the beats the way they, they come right out they come right out, you know. They come fully loaded like the car. They don't. They ain't no roll up windows. They got to get converted to power. <laughs> Them little <laughs> niggas coming out, yeah, ready to go. So, you know, we got to be scared for this type of shit. We got to be scared for this one day not being available. Because if I was the powers that be, I would take this. I, mean, I would definitely that's, take that's the opportunity. What that whole act is, yeah, the, the, public utilities. Yeah. You can control it. So, I mean. They're special. Them little niggas is special. Them little niggas right up under that 19, them little niggas is dangerous. So they, they looking at them, but, you know, as long as they could keep, you know, putting the charter schools there, you know, they ain't scared. As long as they keep the right food, the bullshit, nutrition there, they cool. But they looking. Because you got to think, like, I, we me and Head had this conversation. Um, Shout out to my DJ, DJ Head and shit. But um, educational... What was we talking about here? We were saying something about uh, it was crazy. I don't know how people can't be uninformed in information era. Oh, there's <laughs> no excuse. There's no excuse and, whatsoever. And, and. You can get on the internet from a metro or a cricket. It ain't no excuse <laughs> whatsoever. Really so, not. so for people to even be as uninformed is crazy to me. I don't blame, you know, the leader. Like I don't, I don't blame. I don't know, nobody rapping, you know. Like, if, if a nigga listen to a rapper and think you supposed to do what that nigga do, right. well, I mean, you grew up under some bad circumstances, so I can't really hold you or him accountable. Right. These rap niggas is goofy. <laughs> yeah. That's my, that's, my, that's my favorite word to describe them, man, goofy. Hey, goofy yeah, it's true, so it's yeah. like, I can't look at, like, I, I, I could never look at Drake. And like I said, I don't want this. I'm not Drizzy, my guy. He's just not from Watts. He's not from here. He's from Toronto. Cuz is an actor, and his life is not this life. Mm-hmm. So it's different. He don't have those pressures. So the pressure should not be put upon him. But it's some other niggas mm-hmm. 
you know, who that, that's from this life. That's from this mm-hmm. motherfucker shit. That no, but then some of these niggas, man, you gotta think these niggas don't wanna be they self. These niggas getting high all the time. A nigga get high, man. Nigga don't want to be himself. He trying to get away from whatever's going on right now. Mm-hmm. I ain't never had to smoke and get high, cuz, because I could deal with what's happening right here. I'm going to yeah. deal with it. I don't give a fuck what's up. I'm not finna get high and run away from no bill. I'm going to call and cuss the bill man out. <laughs> yeah. I already say I owe him money right now. Man, fuck y'all. Y'all ain't did shit for me. Why the fuck owe y'all anything? And they going to get their shit. They going to take it. They going to hit a nigga for 20000 on publishing. That's how you going to have to get it from me. The loc ain't giving you nothing Because you ain't did nothing for me to give you nothing mm. See I grew up under real shit And it's like I can't be mad at the rappers You feel me These niggas Look at these niggas These niggas is all on lean <laughs> Nigga What is you trying to slow your life down for Yeah You right about that me? So I can't be mad They running away like the people running away Nobody know what to do These niggas is crazy <laughs> These Yo, niggas is crazy <laughs> We about to go into another break We'll be right back with Glasses Milan. <laughs> All right, we're still in here with the homie G Malone. Uh, we've been talking about some of everything, but one thing we cannot get out of here without talking about is the music. Yeah, so, man, I was going to say, like, for anybody that's listening that's not familiar with Glasses Malone, the guy is a rapper. Right. He makes music. Right. <laughs> you know what, man? I, I, got a, I got away from selling music. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want people to buy my shit because of music. Yeah. Is it? Buy my shit because you like what I'm talking about as a nigga, man. I don't buy my shit because you you can't buy my shit the same reason you buy everybody else shit. It's, it's, it's different. And um, buy my shit because you fuck with me. We don't really got to talk about no music. And I know that's crazy as an artist, you know, motherfucker always want to talk about their music, but man, I'm a man all day. I'm just a man who get in front of the mic and talk about this shit. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not, I don't even, we ain't got to even talk about no fucking music. We talk about other niggas' music. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Well, well, my shit come for it. It come for it. You feel me? Speaking of other niggas, uh, we was talking about this off the air. You have it's this shit has gone on for years, but Tiger and Wayne, the latest, yeah, talking about their grievances with Cash Money as somebody who you know. I don't even know if you're still on the label. No, or no, wasn't. no, no. Okay. I got off. Everybody yeah. thought I was crazy too. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean the thing is, dog, it's like that shit a business. Yeah. Shout out to Stunner. Shout out to Tone. Shout out to Raw. You feel me? They all good niggas. That shit a business, dog. There ain't no politics. Everybody getting this rap shit and start talking about politics. Me and like me and here talk about this shit all the time. It's like, nigga, this shit is a singles business. Mm-hmm. Nigga, if you got a single nigga that's working by itself, nigga, they ain't gotta spend money, they can make money, here go your album. If your singles ain't doing the work, your album not coming because this is the structure that universal music operates under. It's as simple as that. It ain't no extras, nothing. I mean, when you Jay-Z or Beyonce and you got control over your shit, you could drop music. You're a music company. Hove is a, it's not a record company. Feel me? That shit, Rock Nation is not a record company. That shit's an entertainment group. It's a group of niggas doing different things in entertainment. So Beyonce could drop her album. It don't matter because she's in the business of, you know, doing selling music. The business Cash Money Records is, Young Money Records is, that that's what Universal Records, that shit is in the business of records singles so he who has a single or she who has a single that album will come out simple as that it ain't I'm sure Tune and Stunner got their own issues you know them niggas have been around each other for like fucking 30 some years you feel me I, right. you know you be around and you see niggas don't always see eye to eye and shit but you expect that amongst men um, I don't know, like I said, Tune a man. I, I I like Tune a lot, like more than most rappers as as a guy. Like I like him as a, a nigga's a respectable man. I, I like that. I I was here and the nigga came. We had the haters video shooting. His mom stayed here and the ass shit. So I was sick and he had his mom like he was gonna have his mom make me some soup because I was just sick. So I, I it's a real respect for Tune from me. They can deal with they shit a lot different. I think Raw Raw is mad. Tiger's doing what he need to do for his businesses. But to me, as men, we all got to do shit differently. Okay. Like, when I had a problem, if I didn't like something with Stunner or Mac, you fucking best believe I was at that fucking bus or I was at somebody's house. You was going to see me. Right. 
And that's how it is with every rap nigga it is today. I'm not gonna tweet you. I'll, I'll dish you on the rap and all that, but I'm gonna be in your face. <laughs> but your situation is a little bit different, a eh, because you are who you are. I mean, we all men at the end of the day. Yeah. Also, much like some of the other gentlemen you mentioned earlier in the show, a nigga's not gonna have a problem with you and just come to L.A. And everybody has to come to L.A. to get money in this game. Sure. I mean, but everybody. So you is, have I mean, unspoken leverage as well. Well, well that's not. Well, it's, it's more than that. It's nigga. I'm not gonna catch a nigga in L.A. I mean, I'm going to fucking Miami. I know that. Feel me? I'm gonna but go that, to Atlanta. I'm not gonna. Feel me? Like I'm not gonna. It's just man shit. Eventually, if you don't like something about what a man is doing, address that man. That's how I it think, should I be. I think we do a little bit too much publicly, and then you can never recover the situation because even right. when y'all be okay, it's always going to be outside influences, this, that, and the third, and everybody can't deal with that. That right. ain't for everybody. So, I mean, this is some twist complaining about. This is some juvenile. I mean, this shit. This That's what I said. It's been going 20 on fucking years, man. forever. But every nigga, the thing is, Stunner is Stunner. And, and Stunner do what he do. Stunner know what he doing. And, and it, you talking about any of them niggas, that pack of niggas he started with, Toon, Juvie, BG, Fresh, Turk, is different when they not with that nigga. And I, and I love and respect Turk, especially a lot, all them niggas. But Stunner got they operation down. However they need to operate, they've all tried it on their own the way they have and with Stunner it's a different success and it ain't just a check it's more to it than that Stunner know what he doing when them niggas is from that area that part of the world mm-hmm. everybody else import their own business Drake got his own business Nikki got her own business Nikki, Drake, Tiger I mean none of, it's just a bunch of motherfucking random people you know what I mean Nikki from New York Drake from Toronto Cuz from the land feel me Wayne from New Orleans Mills from, these people don't hell no, nah, none of them get it nobody fucking really had to get along Right. Like I don't I didn't really fuck with everybody. I didn't disrespect anybody. But you're not gonna disrespect me neither. You're not gonna tell me you're gonna do something, you're not gonna do it. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna see me and not say nothing to me. Get your ass fucked up. Nothing else, let's be men and women, you know, we grown ass people. But I think people expect too much out of people. Mm-hmm. I don't expect shit out of stunner. Like when I fuck with Sense stunner, of entitlement. Yeah, I don't I don't expect cause I was cash money or young money or whatever. I, mean, I ain't expect to do no songs with Drake. Right. I'm gonna fuck out how he got. Nigga, that nigga don't owe me nothing because we on it. Like nigga, this ain't the motherfucking. We ain't from. Man, my mama didn't have cuz, so <laughs> feel me. It's like <laughs> I think it's a sense of entitlement, and people feel like they should, and and it's some bougie shit because you think they should, and it's it's too much, man. It's like it shouldn't be this hard right. as men. You feel me? How you feel about? Because uh, I know you actually did a video. In a Flatbush, how do you feel about this spread of gang banging across the country? I mean, I think niggas do what they want to do. I mean, I just don't want people doing it under false pretense. Crips are not Crips. Bloods are not Bloods, man. We have gangs. Right. That's what I. But that's what it is. Like this shit confuses me. I lived in New York, and well, I'd be like, "Who the fuck do y'all niggas have a problem with? What set are you for?" Like I'm confused. Well, because gangs ain't necessarily to beef with each other. I mean, that's not what it was built on. It was built on people, you know, tribing together, and then amongst people coming together, other groups of people come together. Right. And then those people always, those tribes don't always see eye to eye. And it depends on the leadership because then, like I said, conversation could break down with lack of education, lack of culture, lack of economics, lack of respect. Right. And then now you have situations and any idiot could go there. The only thing bad about gangs is, one, the people who run them. Hmm. It's usually not an educated person. It's usually not an economically empowered person. It's usually not a person of culture. It's usually not a person who, who's lived a, a great life. It's always a crazy nigga. The craziest nigga who will shoot out with the police, <laughs> shoot out with him in the middle of the day, smoke some, shoot nigga, get some, and somehow beat the case and get out, he runs the hood. Yeah. That's who niggas is following. Two, it's a genderless. For me, like, it's no agenda. Yeah. Three, anybody could join. Anybody could man, be in the game. Man, like man. a few years ago, man, we were all them bloods was here in Atlanta, and wow. I was like, Bro, ain't no Crips here. Like, who are y'all banging on? Well, because it's, you know, it's like it was like it was like blood, like, blooded yeah. out, and I was like, who are y'all beefing with? Like, where did this shit come and from? And it went bro? away what, just that quick. Yeah. What, what's fair is, like I said, it's not about you. It ain't Crips. 
like Crips and Bloods didn't come up at the same time and then okay we started right. something to fight it was like Crips came around because they was trying to be knockoff Panthers you know they didn't yeah. like it but they did their own little thing and that was cool and then Blood started with the niggas initially who didn't want to be Crips and they was like okay we not with that shit we call each other Young Bloods we, we still with this black shit and then it actually just turned into a game right and then shit happens but it wasn't built to beef with each other all Crips don't get along like the first Crip Oh yeah, we documented know was killed by another crip. This is in seventy fucking nine. So, I mean, like, we don't I, we beef with crips everywhere. Like, yeah. it ain't no. We all from different <laughs> gangs. We just got to like every Jackson ain't a family member. Right. Like, if your name Jackson, my nigga, that don't mean you related to Mike. Yeah. Uh, that just mean that <laughs> y'all might have came off the plantation right. from a couple different owners that was cousins. Mm. So that's the same thing with banging. Every crip ain't a crip. Every blood ain't a blood. Every 18th Street ain't from the same hood. These are all different gangs. Everybody got their own gang. And they run their shit, you know, independently. You know, uh, uh, they have autonomy. They operate. <laughs> That's how they operate. That's funny. You posted a picture on your Instagram with Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh, yeah, we back. Like, dude, but what's funny is because we used to always joke about how y'all need a better marketing plan because Bloods was going worldwide. <laughs> you know what it was? I, I had this conversation. I had this conversation with Game and shit a, little, a while ago, too. I said, you know what blood made blood so so much better than Crip? Because they allowed everybody to be a blood. They didn't question you. Like, it's some niggas out here that say blood, that rap. Like, what blood are you from? Like, right. niggas be like, this blood. It's like, nigga, you know there's actual blood games, my nigga. And I, <laughs> as, as, a, as a California nigga who fuck with bloods, I mean, you know, be like, yeah. I fuck with a lot of, but my whole life, I mean, as a, deep, as a drug dealer, you fuck with bloods. It's just, you fuck with whoever got money. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't been in blood neighborhoods my whole life. I mean, Bonnie Hunter, J Rod, that's literally across the street from where we from. So we always been cool. It ain't, you know, they wear red, we wear blue. Who the fuck? And everybody wear whatever color. Really, they just from their neighborhood. Right. So, but we're all from different gangs. Like bloods beef with each other, yeah. like killer beef. Mm-hmm. Like the, the the biggest hoods, the biggest blood hoods in L A are beefing. Denver Lane is the biggest one in the middle. It's the biggest, probably the worst one in the middle. And they're beefing with the Inglewood families. And that's the West Side. That's Inglewood, the biggest blood gang on, on the West Side, just about. And they beefing with the Swans, which is probably one of the original, you know, blood gangs on the East Side. Yeah. And, you know, they beefing with both of those guys. And they blood. Like, nobody, like, you know, these are gangs. This ain't no motherfucking government of niggas just. <laughs> none of that shit, nigga. This shit, now from 7th Street, no cut. Ain't no click, nothing. Man. Yeah, we crisp, but I don't, nigga. N- any, I don't give a fuck what color his rag is. He can die tomorrow. Mm. Feel me? You, you, and you have to live like that because it's no different than Atlanta. It's like they got gangs in Atlanta. You don't need to have a crip in the blood. It could just be these niggas from over here against these niggas from over here. Yeah, that's oh, like, like our day. Because growing up, our gangs were like pretty much like on some old high school shit. You know what I'm saying? If you went to this school, or you went to that school, like. Yeah. It was his own Whenever y'all saw each other At the football game at the, at the checkers Or whatever Then it turned into Like the neighborhoods And the streets but And then all that it, Then it break down In the cliques Yeah but I think Nick, In my gang or Let's say J-Rock gang J-Rock gang He from Bonnie on the J-Rock gang got Ten gangs inside that gang Right you had the Bellhaven Bonnie Hunters, the regular Bonnie Hunters, the Projects, the Block Bonnie Hunters. And then within the Project Bonnie Hunters, you got the Shaw Lines, the Four Lines, the Deuce Lines, and That's all the No crazy. Lines. And it's, these are all separate games. And they literally were shooting out with each other, all from the same game. In the same radius. Great Street's the same thing. Great Street's the have the Peter Roll Squad, Peter Roll Mafia, Dutch Town, Parole, all these different games. You got the Anzac Great Street, you got the 112th Street Great Street, you got these Great Streets. Mm-hmm. And niggas go. So that's the false pretense about game banging that I always want to tell everybody. Like, my nigga, this ain't like no community thing, nigga. This is really some bullshit. Mm. And, like, nigga, it ain't cool. I don't give a fuck you a crib, nigga. That shit don't matter to me, nigga. I don't fuck if you a blood, nigga. Just stay the fuck out of my way. <laughs> or be cool when you see me. Yeah. Right. Because other than that, you know. Shit, it's the same shit. Like, do you think there's any chance for, you know, because I know you said, you know, it's always like the no. crazy nigga, the dumb nigga, the, the leadership. Do you think there's a chance that, like, new leadership will come about where it's like, you know. Hell no, nah, because a smart nigga not going to be. <laughs> not going to be in it. <laughs> the only nigga, like that, only nigga like that is me, and I don't want to take over, man. It's yeah. like, how you going to, that's like trying to fix slavery. Yeah. How you going to fix black people right now? I, I, I abandon these niggas. The ones that's 22 and above, man, I abandon them niggas. Man, let them niggas. I'm going to focus on the kids. Get these niggas some education. 
let's get some community centers for these little niggas. Let's let's get these little niggas some financial a- opportunities. The rest of them niggas is animals. Mm. They already animals. You just you just put them in captivity. You get them niggas a job, <laughs> a job that take their time and pay decent. Make them so tired that they come home and ain't nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up on them. You feel me? If a nigga watch Love and Hip Hop, I gave up on him in his life. Yeah. <laughs> Feel me? Like nothing good gonna come from that. What you what, what you do? If they approach you and they want you to be on love and hip hop. Have it four times. <laughs> Have it four times. I was like, nah. Well, I will say this: I've actually seen you north of Wilshire in the last. Man, week. this nigga. <laughs> I invited this nigga to the Notorious premiere, and this nigga was like, "Come on, cause you know I'm not coming out there." I'm like, "Nigga, you rap." <laughs> It's a Biggie movie. Bring your ass to the screen. And I fuck with Big. I didn't want to go. Because it was in Hollywood. You know what it is. This is my problem. It's crazy. <laughs> no, this is my problem with Hollywood. This is my problem with a lot of places. I don't like places where they don't treat people right. Hmm. That's really as simple as that. Hollywood has a notorious way of treating people wrong, especially people that look like me. Hmm. Not me. We gonna go to every club. We gonna get right in. Supper, no problem. But I can't stand by. I don't feel good no more if I go to the supper club and it's a hundred people, you know, treating this motherfucker like it's heaven. They trying to get in and they, oh, glass, come on. And then I'm looking at them and they and they just look so disappointed. Right. And like that one night, their whole existence is judged by some nigga who probably don't even got a job during the week. Mm-hmm. So like I don't like that about Hollywood. I don't like the fakeness about Hollywood. I don't like that. I don't like fake ass shit. Me and fake ass shit don't. Me and bitches with fake titties and fake ass. That shit. Make me <laughs> I thought you that was. Your, I thought here. that was West Coast. Yeah, I thought that was. I thought that fake was L.A. Titties is white girls. In I thought, LA. Is that not? No, that's just women. Women oh. is notorious for faking. Yeah. yeah they was born and they was bred in lies like heels to make you look a little taller and give you a little arch. Tight pants to hold this shit all together, girdles to suck in your stomach, makeup to cover up your, 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 uh, your, uh, I woke up this way face. <laughs> <laughs> Weaves to try to make your hair look like something that your hair could never grow out to be. Mm. Eyelashes to bring more attention to whatever. Mascara to make the dark parts of your white part of your eyes pop out. Lipstick to make everybody stare at your lips but not think about head or kisses. <laughs> bras, wonder bras to make sure that your titties seem perky when they probably not and it's okay. Like, <laughs> it's just fake shit in general. I just don't get down with fake shit. I just, it just, it's, it irks me different. Like, it makes me feel a certain way. And, and Hollywood represents just that. It's the it's the guy in Star. Some people think it's a dream. Like, hey, I love it. He think it's about a dream. You go there, it's a dream town, and your dreams could come true. I know that shit a nightmare. I ain't never seen nothing that did good for anybody in life. Never. It, it's not built to be that way, especially for people that look like me. Black people from California detest Hollywood, though. I've noticed that to be the case, so that's why I'm kind of, like, poking fun at it. Oh, they do. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess because y'all grow up looking at it it's nothing to see the Hollywood sign but us way over here on the east coast we like yo well it's shit. really a piece of shit it's really <laughs> a ran down ass town it's mm. raggedy as fucking Hollywood like if you really go to Hollywood yeah. Hollywood ain't nice it's mm. cheap like you go to Orange County it's some expensive house. Hollywood Hills is cheap compared really? to the shit in what you go to motherfucking Orange County you fuck around Catch that 73, that toll road over there by that Newport Beach and all that. Mm. Yeah, that shit's 60, 70 million. Oh, my God. Everybody live on Hollywood Hills, except actors. Everybody <laughs> live up that motherfucker. Man, that shit ragged. That shit is a whole bunch of shit built on top of a whole bunch of shit. Mm. True, true. I Which, mean, it's dirty. It's nasty. It's people walking around. Just it. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck wrong with people. <laughs> I, if I don't give a fuck if I was from Atlanta, I'd never go to that motherfucker. <laughs> what you reading right now? Um, the Bible. I just been really reading the Bible. Um, I think it's some relevant things about today. There, I don't look at the Bible as a book of spiritual you know, bullshit like everybody else. I read the Bible for to understand it's the past, present, and the future. Mm-hmm. And I, I really need a clearer understanding on who God is exactly, who Jesus is exactly, and who Satan is exactly. That's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to Banner because um. He was talking about how he believed that the slave masters gave us religion or Christianity. And it's like, no, they didn't, my nigga. They, they, you couldn't read. You would die. Just because right. some some motherfucking white man was reading some shit out of a book he felt related to your situation, that don't mean he gave you Christianity. Just because they allow yeah. you to have church with some man who actually has a 
you know, not only does he have alter- ulterior motives, but right. also he has a false impression of Jesus in his own house. Oh, without How a you going to listen to that nigga teach Christianity? So that's something I also want to talk to Banner. Like, I want to politic with him about because I, I think the people that are real messengers, like, be careful what you condemn him because it's like some of this shit is probably not meant to be condemned. Definitely not. And it's all about a different understanding um, because, I mean, it's obvious that we didn't get introduced to, to Christianity or whatever we call Christianity in America because that's just not, most of the stuff took place in Africa that's what I said. hundreds of years, thousands of years and before that's we why, even got it. Exactly. So that's what I was saying. Exactly. Like people, the false, the false understanding is that that was the first time Jesus Christ was introduced to people of color. No, it was over there first. Right. Exactly. White people just got up on who Jesus was. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They just got up exactly. on who Jesus was. Yo, before we go, please tell people where they can reach you. It's cool, man. Media. I'm Googleable. Glasses Malone, <laughs> G Malone, you feel me? I'm, I'm Googleable. As far as music, man, I got some new shit coming. Just look for me. Glass, I, I'm going to put it in your stomach. Too, right? Yeah, I'm going to put it in your chest. I ain't going to let you look for me. I'm going I'm to show up to you with it. It's going to show up on something you need in your life, and it's going to just happen to be, oh, that's that crazy-ass nigga that was on that radio show. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm ain't crazy. It's just fun. And I have fun. I, I talk my shit. It's a, it's a couple. I, I really am careful with what I do with music. Like, I understand that if I get on my shit like this whole interview, it's a little scary. Yeah. And, I, and I will challenge you as a man. Like, some rappers might hear this interview and be offended, and it's like, well, if you feel like that, my nigga, holler at me like a man. Just come holler at me, and, I, and, I, and we could talk, like... But my music, I, I try not to make it jump out there too much. I kind of make it listenable. Here, man, this is this this album is a good time. It's pretty much about five percent of how I live, right. of my mind. Gotcha. I didn't really go deep. I kept it surface for niggas. First I, time. I always wonder, like, 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 why, like, why, why do that? Why do that? Um, this is a business. Okay. This shit ain't no motherfucking. I mean, it's poetry involved and it's a message involved, but. I don't want to sell my poetry. Hmm. You know, when I'm writing something that should be a, a, a something we enter into, into the culture, it shouldn't be for sale. I shouldn't be trying to. I shouldn't be for profit. This is a business, and I want to be in a business for this project particular and selling a good time. Nothing sells better than a good time. You know, That's right. church ain't gonna make more money than clubs hmm. unless it's the Catholic Church. And that's, a, that's a whole nother animal. That's a whole nother animal. That's a whole nother animal. Yo, we appreciate, right, we appreciate you coming through, man. It's Most love. definitely. It's love. And uh, we'll be looking out for that album. Make sure y'all follow him on all the social media and shit. It's definitely a lot of laughter. Yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> without, shit, though. Without a doubt. But, yo, you listen to Day One Radio, ablradio.com.